For question number two, the correct option is option three. It's an easy question and I shall discuss it in briefly uh, here. Now they have talked about a particle that is thrown vertically upwards in air of negligible air resistance. If I can show that quickly, suppose this is the ground, this is the particle that is thrown vertically upwards with an initial velocity of u shown by this blue arrow. And during its motion, during the flight, the only force acting on the body is the force of gravity in the absence of drag force. And therefore, the only acceleration possessed by the particle is freefall acceleration of a constant magnitude acting vertically downwards. And therefore, I can show this acceleration by this red arrow pointing vertically downwards. Okay, so under this acceleration, the particle goes vertically upwards, reaches the highest point, then it comes to rest momentarily, represses the path downwards and eventually comes to the ground. So you see, if I choose a coordinate system consisting of only one axis, that is y axis, and take the upward direction as the plus y direction, you can see the velocity vector u, that's positive, velocity vector v rather, that's positive during the upward motion. Its magnitude decreases during upward flight until this point, then reverses direction and during the downward flight, velocity is negative, its magnitude increasing gradually from this point to this point. But while velocity is positive, continually decreasing during upward flight, and negative continually increasing in magnitude during downward flight, the acceleration of the particle during the whole flight, be it the upward part or the downward part, throughout this motion, acceleration remains constant at G, vertically downwards. So using the sign convention, upward is positive. We can write down acceleration of the particle during the whole flight, that is upward as well as downward flight, we can write it as minus g. In scalar notation, minus is sitting because it's downward and downward is taken to be the minus y direction. Magnitude is fixed at g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square. Now in a graph of v versus t, you know that the slope of the graph, that is m, that represents dv dt, the rate of change in velocity in time, which is nothing but acceleration. If for a body thrown vertically upwards, acceleration is minus g, a negative constant value. Let me write this here, this a is equal to minus g. So let us look for the graph among the four, where the acceleration, or rather the slope of the graph, remains constant at a negative value. And the obvious choice is option number three. You can see here, it's a straight line. At every point, it makes an angle of theta an obtuse angle with the t-axis, tan theta is negative, a constant value at every single point, which corroborates that this graph represents a motion where acceleration is a negative constant value, just like our case. This is the solution we have picked up. This is the option number three. Just telling very briefly, you can see here, in graph four, in the first part of motion, acceleration is negative, Second part of motion acceleration is positive. So I eliminate that. Graph number two is an absurd graph because they are showing time can decrease. That can never happen. Time can only increase. In graph number one, you can see in the first part of motion, acceleration is positive, slope is positive. In second part of motion, slope is negative, acceleration is negative. Once again, it's not true. So we choose the option three where we find out throughout the flight, upward part as well as downward part, acceleration remains constant at a value of minus g throughout, hence the choice is option three.